Hello everyone. In this section we are going to see how to plot curves or equation and how to annotate them, add text or if you want to add some scientific notation, how to do that using matplotlib. So I am just taking the numpy library, importing the numpy library and importing matplotlib.pyplot as plt. And let's say you have a variable which I'm taking as a time variable time. It is ap dot a range from 0 to 5 with the steps of 0 0.01. Right? A range takes the steps, so your starting is 0, 5 is up to 5, and this is your step size. And we will take a simple example. We will take a np dot cosine function of this variable t and uh, let's plot so you are going to use the plot function let's plot on the x-axis is my time on the y-axis is the cosine value of that particular time I'm just going to increase the line width and do a plt dot show So you would see this kind of a curve. It is a very simple cosine curve and you are plotting, you are just using the np.cosine function. You can use inbuilt functions, you can use your own functions. So let me increase the frequency of you know the cosine and I can do it directly in the plot function I can call np dot cos of t and since we want to increase the frequency let us do it 2 into np dot y into time so you would get this kind of a repeated a, a, fre a frequency of a higher frequency cosine function okay let's put a horizontal line here to mark the 0th horizontal axis for that you can do a plt dot ax h line the function is ax h line in which you will mention at which particular point do you want a horizontal line i want a horizontal line at y is equal to 0 and i want to differentiate it with a black color so i'm going to give color as k so you get a horizontal line at 0th tick on your y as such you can give as many as horizontal or vertical lines that you want to draw here you can similar to ax h line you can do a ax v line which will give you a vertical line if you want to have a vertical line here which is starting at zero you can give an ax v line when you have a vertical line you are going to set the x parameter at which point do you want the vertical line i'm giving x as zero Sorry, this has to be a vertical line. So it starts from this 0, 0, and this is how you would see the curve. Now, let's suppose you want to put some text. The function for that is plt.text. If you look into this function, it takes the xy position and it takes the string. So let me give the position. As uh, three comma point eight, and I'm giving the string as <coughs> cosine waves. So if you look how this particular function takes this, the starting point is three. So this is within your figure. From where to where you are saying the starting point is three, 
and this is 0.8 okay suppose you do not want it within the figure you can very well adjust your y axis it will take here as 1.2 but the point to be noted is it is as it is not like the b box to anchor okay this ticks are the ticks that it is taking for the x axis and the y axis so since we have the limit 0 to 5 let me give it as 2.5 or let me begin it at 2.2 so it seems that it is in center so this is how you can use plt.txt plt text can be used multiple times okay and you can place it as at different location suppose i want to place it somewhere here so i can say 6 and 0 so my x is uh, 0 sorry y is 0 x is 6 So I get a value here. So this is how you can use, you can mention a text. This text function can be used in any of the charts that we have used previously. It is not only particularly to the plt.plot. You can try it on later. You can use this particular function on any of the uh, previous charts that you have learned. So we have this function right this text this text you can also give a scientific notation to the text to give the scientific notation the text notations are used uh, there are a lot of text notations I'll cover some of them here and they are quite easily available uh, on the net you can just find out a text notation for a particular symbol so suppose I the text notation needs to be given in dollar dollar okay it has to be within the dollar dollar so your start and end both is within the dollar dollar symbol okay so within my quotes I have dollar dollar and I want to say that on the x-axis now suppose uh, so this is a text I could have given on the x-axis as well. We'll see. We'll just copy paste that later. So suppose you had, you wanted to actually give the symbol. Uh, you want to actually give the formula, which is two into your np dot pi, right? So your pi into t, and the pi you want a the text notation. It is generally starting with a slanting backslash so this is a backslash pi and if you use the correct notation uh, no error we are going to get this particular symbol here okay this is the scientific notation had you not wanted to give it in the text but you wanted to give it in the label okay so generally we say this as x axis right whatever is there on the x-axis you can very well easily give the same thing here okay and you will get a scientific notation in your on your x label you can also do it on the y label so wherever you are using text you can use this tex notation for your scientific uh, notations if you want on your charts now how does it help if you are writing some research paper or submitting your research report then you may want to actually use these notations okay because that becomes easy for the reader they get it there and there itself in the Jupyter notebook some of the functions that you may come across plotting is the sigmoid function when you learn AI sigmoid function is one of the important functions that you use basically in either machine learning or in artificial intelligence so the sigmoid function formula is 1 divided by 1 plus e raised to minus x okay and minus x being the value so your individual data point this is your sigmoid function 
so let's try to plot a sigmoid function so I'm going to take a variable on the x-axis it could be your data could vary from let's say minus 5 to plus 5 I'm keeping a step size of 0 0.5 it's up to you how you want to uh, if you want to reduce the step size or increase the step size if it's a too large step size it would be it would seem as a jagged function the lines would the curve would not be smooth let's write a small function which takes x and it returns So this is my user defined function. The, the sigmoid function is available in some of the libraries but I also wanted to show you the user defined function. And then let us do a plt.plot. So we are passing x, we are calling sigmoid of x. you would see this function okay, the sigmoid function <coughs> it is an s shape function and uh, anything above <coughs> data point beyond 0 0.3 would be very close to 0 above 3 could be very close to 1 okay this is what you would learn so this is coming very close to 0 here and very close to 1 here okay, so this is how you can plot your user defined functions and then you can use your ahx line v line you can also give the scientific notations here so to the title you can give a scientific notation should be slash exp let us check that okay. no. so slash exp is coming as it it is not coming as exponential so we will have to check what is the tx you know the latex uh, symbol to get the exponential okay. and you can put the brackets as well here so it will come out together So exp itself is the uh, latex version so slash exp is giving us that if you just want to write e you can just take a normal e but then for this you don't need a exponent you don't need a dollar dollar you don't need a scientific notation okay so whenever you use a slash and you use something if you get an error it means that your scientific notation has, has gone wrong somewhere okay so if it doesn't recognize you will get a, uh, a fatal exception so since it is recognizing slash exp as exp you are not getting a, a fatal error there it is printing it correctly now let's see an interesting uh, function which is called as annotation so plt dot annotate the annotate function is like you put placing a text but along with an arrow so suppose I want to annotate this particular point which is the midpoint okay at the point 5 I want to annotate the way the annotation takes is first it takes the text so I am just going to say the midpoint as discussed earlier this particular text could also be a scientific notation if you are putting it in a dollar dollar symbol 
okay so that is applicable throughout so after you put on the text now at which position do you want this text to appear okay the x y is the point that you want to annotate so i want to annotate the point 0 and 0.5 so i want to annotate this particular point okay the second thing is the point that you want to annotate and then you have a xy text where do you want to place this text okay it is like the text function xy this is xy text where do you want to place it i want to place it somewhere here so x is 5.2 and or let me place it here at 2.5 so i want to place it at 2 and 0.5 and what are my arrow properties for now i am just going to give it a empty dictionary i am going to take a default so you will get this default arrow here where is the arrow pointing to this particular point point is 0 0.5 the text is what you define mention there and this is the position of the text 0 and 0.5 2 and 0.5 okay suppose you give this x around 6 my point is same x y is 0 0.5 and only my placement of the text is changing okay yeah. so the placement of the text is here the arrow is still showing to the same point so this is how the annotation works and you can have multiple annotations this horizontal line i'm just shifting to 0.5 okay now it's just okay so i'm annotating here you can have multiple annotations to the same point or to the different point if it is to the same point you can adjust your text position now here i am giving it to a different point so my point is 4 and 1 and let's say i am seeing the top point so my point is 4 and 1 i have the text is 5 and 0.5 and this is the top point so it is overlapping somewhere here so let me just change my y as well y is almost 1 and then i get a annotation here i can give a bottom point annotation here as well okay. so if you want to highlight something uh, if you are doing some research and you have produced a paper and if you want to highlight then this annotation becomes quite handy so it takes the text the the second thing is the point that you want to annotate the third thing is where you want to place the text and the fourth thing is the arrow properties now this arrow properties is uh, you can it's a dictionary so you can change the line width you can change the arrow style you can change the color of the arrow the color of the border of the arrow and so on one of the things that i'm going to showcase to you is let's suppose you say arrow style is fancy and uh just okay so this so this is fancy so here it is broader and here it is coming like a um, a pointed arrow you can give the color as well you can give the line width so there are a lot of uh, these arrow properties arrow styles that you can play with and make your charts much more fancier let's see some of the more properties of annotation i am just going to remove this uh, the top one you can also 
give a boundary box to your text that is also in a dictionary format which I am keeping as default for now so your text can have a boundary box okay so that's a pay box a dictionary empty dictionary by default it takes the color blue and for the text it takes the color black in this you can have the face color if I say the face color is white your box instead of blue will be white color even the box line width can be changed if you change let's say cyan color line width is 2 and line the line width has changed to 2 so I'm keeping it white and the line width has 2 okay. so rotate is not available to the box it is not available outside as well so the correct attribute is rotation it's not rotate rotation so if you give a rotation of 45 then this box is rotated at a 45 degrees you can also change the style of this box so your box style can be a circle so by default it's a square you can make it a circle okay. and there are many such styles which are available so once you go through the uh, documentation this is a sort tooth but circle or square is the best I have found It is also a style called round okay. it is just rounding of the uh, the points you know that this the square points it is rounding them off so this is how you can use you know this different annotation text scientific notations and equations in your uh, in Python so it will all be useful when you write research reports and publish your findings. I'll see you in the next section.